Everybody knows the figures. Since the start of the war, about 40, 41, 42,000 thousands Palestinians have been killed. Maybe more below the rubbles of Gaza. Most of them are innocent civilians, including over 11,000 children. And this after 1,200 Israelis were killed and hundreds taken hostages. Many of them still are being kept in captivity while Gaza has been reduced to rubble, a place where life is no longer possible. This week I met families of hostages. I already did during my last visit to Israel, and I see their agony. And two weeks ago, I was in the border of Gaza. I heard the bombing behind me, and I saw large supplies of humanitarian aid, which could be life-saving, but are not allowed to enter into Gaza. And it's difficult for me to add anything to what Commissioner General Lazzarini of UNRWA said yesterday. Gaza is a place that horrifies even the most seasoned humanitarians. And I want to use this opportunity to pay tribute to UNRWA, of which 222 staff members have been killed. The European Union keeps calling for an immediate ceasefire, unconditional release of all hostages, unhindered delivery of humanitarian aid, which is really needed. And we support the US, Qatar, and Egypt in their ongoing efforts. It has already been said, escalation in the region is driving it into the abyss of a full row war across the blue line and in the region. While we are talking, bombs are again falling in Beirut, and civilians are paying an unbearable price. The Foreign Affairs Council of the European Union, which I am proud to represent here, supports the French and American efforts for an urgent ceasefire in Lebanon, and implementing the United Nations Security Council resolution 1701 by your parties. It is essential, but allow me to remind that this uh, resolution was adopted 20 years ago, and we are still asking for it to be implemented. Also in the West Bank, including East Jerusalem, it's about to fall off a cliff and we continue condemning violence, the European Union continues condemning violence, all kind of terrorism and settlement expansion. We have adopted sanctions on terrorist organizations, such as Hamas, but also on some of the extremist settles. And as I, many have said, sorry, but West Bank is becoming another Gaza. And you can see the videos of bulldozers destroying roads, destroying water supply systems, destroying sewerage, all that on the name of fighting against terrorism, of course. Israelis, Palestinians, Lebanese, and all people deserve security and the protection of international law all. For Israel's sake, as well as for the Palestinians, we need a strong, legitimate and effective Palestinian authority. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Mr. President, distinguished members of the Security Council, more than enough has been said about the horrors of ongoing genocide in Gaza, but not a single action is taken by the Security Council to stop it. Instead, the Israeli criminal mafia is rewarded. Their crimes are justified and their atrocities are normalized before our eyes. 
That's why Netanyahu has, and his companions have become so viciously emboldened to dream of repeating their carnage in Lebanon and of pushing their entire region, the entire region into a full-scale war. It is very clear that they are counting on U.S. support in their sinister campaign of terror and destruction. Just this morning, Israeli regime used several 5,000-pound bunker busters that had been gifted to them by the United States to hit residential areas in Beirut. While the Israeli regime must be held accountable for the atrocity crimes they have been committing in occupied Palestine and Lebanon, one cannot disregard the U.S. complicity in their crime. I just remind the Council of a couple of facts. First, Israel's <clears throat> warmongering relies on U.S. military support and political backing. American weapons constitute the major part of Israeli weaponry and ammunition used in Gaza, and therefore the United States is implicated in every aspect of Israel's atrocity. The vast majority of bombs Israel drops on Gaza are U.S. made. The U.S. has sent so many arms to Israel since October 7 that the Pentagon has struggled to find sufficient cargo aircraft to deliver the material. If there is minimal honesty in U.S. expression of concern over the loss of innocent Palestinian life in Gaza and Lebanon, it can simply deny Israel the tools it needs to commit crime. <clears throat> Mr. President, it is now more than a year of genocidal campaign in Gaza. More than 200,000 people have been slaughtered, wounded, or buried under the rubble. The whole Gaza Strip is leveled to the ground. Children and women have been deliberately mass murdered as part of Israel's deliberate whim to annihilate Palestine. The world has been watching with indignation and disgust while the West has only been appeasing the culprit. Mr. President, the Council's credibility is shrinking every minute as it is prevented by Israel's major supporters from fulfilling its, responsi its responsibility under the Charter. The Council must act now and stop Israel's cruel plan to, ex to exterminate an entire nation who have for eight long decades been under brutal occupation and suppression. The Council's inaction is an invitation to more atrocity. The Council's members and indeed the whole United Nations system would be held responsible for every atrocity Israel commits in Gaza, in Lebanon, and elsewhere. Netanyahu and his criminal gang must have been arrested and prosecuted for the most heinous crimes, not to let him appear before this august body and take pride in his evil deeds. That's the historic shame that a high-profile killer dares to show up at the United Nations and poison the General Assembly with his disgusting lies and outrageous threats to invade other states and kill more people. He is illusional about the people in the region that he boasted about normalizing relations with Muslims by swimming through a sea of Palestinian and Lebanese blood. That's not going to happen for sure. As Israeli campaign of death and destruction continues, the people in the region become more determined in their firmly held belief that Israel is a nasty outsider planted in our region as part of a colonial scheme to engage our region in <clears throat> unending cycle of wars and violence. We express our sympathy towards the people of Lebanon. The Islamic Republic of Iran will be on the side of Lebanon and resistance by all means. I speak to you as a representative of the country that facilitated the Oslo Accords back in 1993. We have been uh, committed to the cause of uh, fostering uh, good relations between Israel and Palestine and to prepare for the, uh, for, uh, for the work uh, of establishing a Palestinian state. We always thought that we would uh, recognize the state of Palestine, but we thought until recently that the right moment of doing that was at the end of a process of uh, voluntary negotiations open-ended between the two sides. 
when the Oslo Accords were uh, agreed. The idea was to build the institutions of a Palestinian state, bottom up. That will we begin with the practical elements of a state, uh, while negotiations would go on on the four clusters of outstanding issues that we all know so well. And it was uh, people like Ichak Rabin and Shimon Peres and uh, Yasser Arafat and their teams who negotiated this, in my view, in very good faith, with a clear uh, indication that they actually wanted to achieve this goal, which is why we thought, and I still think, given the information we had at the time, that the right thing to do was to build it bottom up uh, so that these outstanding issues of borders and status of refugees and security, all these questions could be, could be settled uh, 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 at the end. And at that time, we, and I believe all countries of the Uni uh, United Nations, would recognize the state of Palestine. Well, at some point we realized that there was no progress in these talks, that uh, not much happened. And I have been in and out of this job, and uh, I've had the opportunity uh, both now and previously to chair the AHLC, the ad hoc committee, uh, for the donor committee for Palestine, which has been ad hoc for 31 years, which is uh, a long interpretation of ad hoc. Uh, and uh, we had a meeting yesterday, by the way, which uh, was very constructive, and Prime Minister Mustafa uh, gave uh, a very good report of what, has done, what he has done and his government has done since they were uh, came into our uh, office some months ago, and also plans uh, that were uh, very broadly applauded by the donors, including the uh, European Union and the United States of America, which are my co-chairs in that role. The problem was, in many of the years that we were doing this work, uh, that uh, we were wondering whether we were part of the solution or part of the problem. P uh, on a good day, part of the solution because we were building the quintessential institution that is necessary if you want to have a state. And we have seen, and this council knows this more than most, sometimes we recognize states without really having the interior in place. Uh, so the idea was that when the state was in place, it was really firmly built to be able to cooperate with Israel in a constructive manner, but also to provide the key uh, services uh, and, uh, and, and provide for the aspirations of the Palestinian people. But on the bad day, we were thinking maybe we were a part of the problem because we were just uh, pr creating what some people saw as a process and what some people saw as status quo, as a kind of status in itself. And of course, the process is good if it leads to something, but it can be quite harmful if it does not lead to anything. So at some point we realized that we could not go uh, on eternally. We had to change gears. And what has happened now, I'm not gonna repeat what so many people have said of the immense uh, atrocities and the violence and the death and destruction which has been bestowed upon the people of Israel, the people of Palestine, both in Gaza and in the West Bank and uh, now also in, uh, in Lebanon and the fear of many countries that it will expand into other countries in the region, that even some of the peace accords that were required decades ago could now be in trouble. So out of that we realized that we had to change gears. And uh, together with precisely Slovenia, and I applaud you for your uh, very good work here as, um, as president of the Council and Spain and Ireland, and uh, we added ourselves to the already long list of countries that have recognized Pal uh, Palestine, 149 right now. That leaves 44 states of the 193 uh, members of the UN. And what we did yesterday, as was mentioned by, uh, uh, by uh, the Foreign Minister of, uh, His Highness the Foreign Minister of Saudi Arabia, uh, we launched what we call the Global Alliance for the implementation of a, a Palestinian state and a two-state solution. Uh, uh, which uh, brings together a number of countries that believe that we have to change gears and accelerate this work now, and that we have to see how we can come out of this deadlock and try to use this deep crisis also as an opportunity to move forward. So we urge, I urge, and uh, the, my, my, uh, the contact group that establishes this group uh, uh, urge uh, all countries to contribute to the universal rec recognition of the Palestinian state and its UN membership, as we have done, uh, Slovenia and my country and many others. To strengthen institutions of the state of Palestine so that they are ready to uh, live up to the expectations of their people in the West Bank, but also to prepare for their return to Gaza. Because we want one Palestine, 
not different Palestines. We want that Palestine which came out of the Oslo Accords, which means that this the, the institutions that we know as the State of Palestine, which will be, the, which are the embryonic institutions of what finally will be the real existing recognized, universally recognized State of Palestine. But also, uh, as uh, again, as was uh, mentioned by in the intervention of Saudi Arabia, uh, that this also would be anchored in a broader regional setting of normalization, where many countries in the region would be ready to provide for the security guarantees of Israelis and Palestinians alike. This is uh, a, a, an updated vision based on the Arab, uh, the Arab peace uh, formula uh, that was launched many years ago, but adapted to today's realities. Many speakers have invoked the ICJ decision of uh, July this year, which uh, very clearly points out in its legal uh, language that the uh, occupation is illegal, that it amounts to annexation, and that it has to come to an end. And the vast majority of the uh, members of the General Assembly confirmed that position in its uh, resolution uh, last week, uh, which, by the way, was the first resolution ever proposed by the Palestinian delegation and supported by many others, including my own country. In that context, I want to share with the Council the following observation. Of course, Israel has uh, to be part of how this is finally settled. But it does not any longer make sense that if you're illegally occupying other people's lands, uh, you have an absolute eternal veto on everything that is going to happen in that area. It does not fit with international law. It does not fit with uh, the vast uh, majority, of how we see it, the vast majority of people on the planet. This has to change. Towards the end, uh, Madam President, I want to say to Israel, and I'm happy to sit beside Israel because we have no problem with diplomacy, we think that when we disagree, we do better speaking to each other uh, than to uh, cancel each other. So I'm happily sitting right here, and I want to say to our friends from Israel, Norway was an enthusiastic supporter of the establish establishment of the Jewish homeland of Israel, and we still is. We want Israelis to thrive and prosper safely, security, without terrorism, without fears to their life in Israel. But we have exactly the same law for the Palestinian people. We want the Palestinian people to thrive and prosper and live securely and safely in Palestine. And we do believe that the people of Israel and the people of Palestine are much more likely to do that if there is a two-state solution. And we think that this is exactly the moment to arrive at the two-state solution, which is why we believe that this is the moment to move forward. Think outside the box and to, and, and to try to move uh, towards uh, towards uh, 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 a real progress on this, um, uh, on this field. And I want to remind the Council that it is bestowed in the Council, uh, on the Council, to be the primary source of upholding international security, international law, in accordance with the UN principles, in accordance with the UN Charter. And as the, uh, as the Secretary General told us on the opening of this uh, session of the GA, uh, international law is in trouble. It's in trouble, serious trouble in Ukraine, it's serious trouble in the Middle East and so many other places. This is an excellent opportunity to turn a very deep, alarmingly dangerous crisis into a major opportunity. And it's time to implement a Palestinian state so that we can implement a two-state solution. I thank you, Madam President.